I, we just have a couple of minutes left. I'd love for you to talk about the symbolism in your painting and get a shot of you over there. This portrait was done by artist Jamie Odgers, whose work I really have supported and collected mm -hmm. for 22 and a half years. Mm -hmm. So I had just really come from Vienna, where I saw all the gorgeous Gustav Klimt. And I think the most magical uh, painting that I really experienced in person was to kiss. I mean, talk yes. about a magical, energetic yes. piece of beautiful art. So I said to, to Jamie, I need something to anchor the, the foyer with. I need a huge piece. And I think we should do something that should be a homage to Gustav Klimt because I love his work and mm. it would fit in with the look of the house and the environment. So he started to sketch and all of a sudden he decided that it should be a portrait of me. But I said, Jamie, this is going to be an enormous piece and people are going to think that I'm some sort of egomaniac when they walk in, they're greeted by this painting. And he said, oh, you know, people, uh, wealthy people, aristocrats throughout the ages have always had their portraits done. And besides, we talked about doing a portrait for over 20 years and it never happened. So this is going to be your portrait. <laughs> so that's what it turned out to be. So there's a lot of uh, Jungian symbolism embedded in this uh, portrait. And for instance, I'm standing in a body of water, which represents the subconscious mind. Or, you know, water represents the conscious element mm -hmm. in all of us. And then he has me posed, um, you know, with my fingers like this. I can't do it because of the rings. But it's, an, uh, you know, it's a typical uh, Renaissance, um, uh, uh, it's a typical aristocratic pose from the Renaissance. And then above me are the Egyptian eyes of Horus, and they're the all-seeing eyes, or the eyes of wisdom, because uh, Horus was the ancient Egyptian god of wisdom. And above that are two spheres, which really represent, um, they represent yin and yang in the Asian tradition. So the golden sphere is the masculine principle, the uh, blue sphere is the lunar aspect, which represents the feminine, and all of us are both masculine and feminine, as you know, yes. because, you know, I'm very feminine, but I'm also yeah. a, uh, you know, uh, warrior goddess. And then uh, to the side are two sets of lovers, inside world or internal world, external world. Above the heads of the two lovers are two trees, the tree of life, the tree of knowledge mm. with new growth represented by the green leaves. Yes. And then you have all these spirals, which are really the coils of the infinite. And Beautiful. So, so that's there my portrait. Is. So can you tell me a little bit about your archetypes? Who do you consider is your archetype? Which goddess? Yes, um, I'm very much into archetypes because as I mentioned, you know, that's really part of the whole union journey that I'm really on. And uh, I actually have three archetypes that I uh, follow uh, as goddesses. And as you know, goddesses really represent uh, basically uh, aspects of our higher selves and what we really aspire to be. But the first archetype uh, goddess that I really pay homage to on a daily basis, and I bow to her temple every single day when I enter into my studio, is the goddess Aphrodite. Oh. And she is the goddess of love, mm -hmm. beauty, and in uh, the Eastern tradition, she's known as White Tara or mm -hmm. Kuan Yin. Mm -hmm. She's also the goddess of, uh, you know, compassion. So she's really my first archetypal goddess. Mm -hmm. So I would say my second goddess is Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. And she is the warrior goddess that I really also love because that's an aspect of who I am. It's running your business. Uh, yes, yes. She, she is what really propels me into the world for achievement, mm -hmm. uh, towards achievement, towards success, uh, and just really being in the world, period. And then the third goddess is the goddess um, Athena, and she is depicted with a you know scar on her uh, arm. And uh, Angelus Arian, another uh, teacher in the Bay Area, said we're all members of the Scar Clan. And basically through our wounds is really how we really learn our lessons mm. and really evolve into really, you know, um, higher levels along our journey. So you can have uh, great wealth, you can have beauty in your life, you can be a great artist, but if none of that, that is really attached with wisdom, I feel that you are poor and you have You're nothing. Empty. You it's have all, nothing. It's all empty and it's all for naught. So I'm a creator of beauty. 
what I really create is beauty. Um, I am a doer and an achiever in the world, and what I aspire towards is wisdom, and that's basically who I am, and those are my important archetypes that really guide my life and give me inspiration. 